Hello everyone, and in this video, we are going to be discussing heat flux in Fourier's law in order to determine how much energy we are losing due to conduction in our system. And so in this example, I've got a little window drawn off to the left here, and we've got a little problem statement that we're gonna be walking through. And so our goal is to determine how much heat is gonna be moving through this window in our home during winter when the outside temperature is 10 degrees Celsius and the inside temperature is 10 to, uh, 15 degrees Celsius. And so we are given these following conditions. And so the formula that Fourier's law is, is the following. So we are told that Q is equal to minus K times the gradient of temperature. And so uh, these are separate terms. So the key thing to make note of here is that typically when you're introducing this stuff, temperature is defined to be in one axis. So we're only looking at one dimension. And so in our little window right here, we can assume that this window only has a temperature uh, gradient along the X axis. So we can neglect any changes in Y or Z. So if I were to define some axes right here, just to back this up, uh, we'd have the following. So this would be our X axis. The line going into the page would be the Y axis and then the line moving up is gonna be our z-axis. And so in our case, we're assuming that there is no temperature change along the y or the z axes, and it's only happening in the x-axis. And so in cases where maybe you've got some ball in the middle of this glass, um, that gradient of your temperature is actually gonna end up being a vector. And so um, that's where things can become more nuanced, and that's when your heat flux will also have to be a vector because of this. Um, and note how K, if we're doing a dimensional analysis here, is really just a scalar quantity. So you're just multiplying some vector uh, in order to determine the direction or magnitude and magnitude of your energy moving through this system. But to keep things simple and to just introduce it right now, we're just going to look at a one-dimensional temperature gradient. And so the way we can really model grad T, or a gradient in our temperature, is as follows. So grad T is really just equal to that 15 degrees Celsius inside minus the 10 degrees Celsius on the outside. And we're gonna divide this by the length of our glass. And that is three millimeters. I'll try to, sorry about that, write clearly. So we've got three millimeters of glass, which is really equal to 0 0.003 meters. And so what we end up finding here is that our gradient of temperature in this example is equal to 333 Kelvin per meter. And so with this, we're also given what the thermal conductivity of our glass is. And so with these two values, if we multiply them together, it will tell us what the heat flux is. So this term right here is heat flux. And so if we multiply the 0 0.96 by 333, what we ultimately find is that little q is equal to 320 watts per meter squared. And so one thing to be really careful of if you're solving this on an exam is that this value is not your final answer because we don't know how much total energy is actually moving out of our house right now because of this window, we need to multiply this by the area. So how much heat lost, how much heat is lost is really equal to this big Q. And so big Q is equal to little Q times the area of our glass. And area of our glass was one meter times two meters, which is equal to two square meters. And so when we finally calculate uh, what big Q is, we find that in total we've got 320 watts per meter leaving our system, or our house, and we're multiplying this by two square meters. And so this tells us that we are losing 640 watts in total because of this window in our house. And that is a fairly substantial amount of energy. Some microwaves operate on about 640 watts per meter. So to just maintain the inside temperature of your house because of this window is requiring 640 watts be added into this system. Uh, every um, oh, oh, uh, That's the energy rates that is required. 
And so that is a lot. What can we do to improve this is to make use of insulating materials or double pane windows that have a little air gap inside of them. And so in a future video, we can look at how introducing a little bit of air inside of this window is going to really help us increase the total resistance of the heat transfer through our window and that'll save us energy costs inside our home and that's the reason why insulation is so important in houses to make us more environmentally friendly and not require as big of an energy bill at the end of the day so that is going to wrap things up for this video i hope it helps let me know if you have any questions and be well